I love cars. I love driving. As an MMA world champion. I'm always down with new challenges. I love development, like in my own car. Let's part this thing. See? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Done. So we are on the highway now, and I don't need to use my hands. <laughs> oh my god. So how about you? What, how are you feeling? <laughs> I could actually do my hair, put on some makeup, whatever. <laughs> so my car is officially a level two autonomous vehicle. It can stay in lane and won't rear end anything, but I do the rest. Level five is the top level when you don't need a human driver or a steering wheel. My car is a long way from that, as I found out on the Autobahn. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, how far are we to improving worldwide traffic with autonomous cars? Here in the heart of Berlin is one of the most interesting test tracks to improve autonomous driving, where connected cars already drive alongside normal ones. It's actually the first inner city test track for automated and networked driving. This project is run by Berlin's Technical University and now we're here to meet the developers of the program. Hi, morning. What is the difference between my autonomous driving car and the test field you have installed here right in the middle of Berlin? Your car can do that for, for only for the 20 seconds. Now it's warning me to take over the steering, so I'm just gonna do it for it. Imagine that your car is, will be equipped with a lot of other sensors, lidar, camera, and the radars. With the additional information what we are providing from the environment, your car will be able to drive, let's say, two hours or three hours and, uh, fully autonomously. So these cars can scan their driving environment, but can they tell what is going to happen next? I wanted to know how well the computers can figure out how we humans behave on the streets. So I went for a drive in the university's test car. I was a bit disappointed when lab director Axel Hessler grabbed the wheel. Warum haben wir jetzt einen Fahrer dabei? Der Fahrer, der fährt das Fahrzeug, der fährt ja nicht autonom bisher. Fährt ja nicht von alleine. Okay. Our approach based on the distributed intelligence where we digitalize the road, that means divide the road in several segments. We equip the road with different types of the sensors to build a perception, that means the real picture of the current state. They can predict how the future can look like. We have here this integrated navigation system, we have here this iPad and the Rechner. Um, why do you need all these devices? This is now a test car, a try car, and we want to see verschiedene Aspekte des Fahrzeugs untersuchen und je nachdem welcher Techniker gerade in dem Auto sitzt, der benutzt die eine oder andere Anzeige denn. Wir haben hier eine Fahrradwarnung implementiert. Die Infrastruktur sieht den Bereich, erkennt das Fahrrad, so dass der Fahrer bzw. das autonome Auto Bescheid weiß, da kommt ein Fahrradfahrer, ich muss Vorsicht walten lassen. We are collecting a lot of data daily. 50 terabyte data. We are trying to analyze the information, try to train our algorithms, try to improve our methods. And that is for our new challenge. Well, this urban track provides a lot of challenges for autonomous cars. For example, multi-lane roads, roundabouts, traffic lights. To be honest, most humans have problems here. So it's gonna be a tough challenge for machines. If you develop an approach which can work on that, in both roundabout, it has to work everywhere in the, in, the, in the world. Autonomous driving is everywhere, but Berlin is not the only test track here in Germany. There are so many more. The longest one is 280 kilometers long and includes sections of the A39 Autobahn near Wolfsburg. 
and there's the cross-border track stretching from Germany through Luxembourg to France. So what are the benefits of all this testing? How about the air quality in that city that's on the road? How about the traffic jam? How about the parking space? We are providing a lot of the new services which can improve our life. We have two major competitors. One is the Americans, the other is Chinese. They are investing a lot of money. The biggest self-driving test site in the world is probably in Chandler, in the US state of Arizona. The Google spin-off Waymo is running a fleet of self-driving robotaxis there, with human safety drivers as backup for now. So far, a couple of hundred people use the ride-hailing service. California has the most autonomous vehicles on the roads, and they have been involved in accidents. Difficult driving conditions pose huge problems for artificial intelligence, and expectations of a fast railroad have been dampened. I mean, I, I'm fully convinced we will have autonomous car within the let's say five years. Five years? Berlin already has a bus running with autonomous driving skills. One round has one mile, it has four stops, it has space for six people at one time, and its maximum speed is 15 kilometers per hour. Not exactly what I call impressive, but at least it's for free, and this is what we Germans like. <laughs> Everybody needs to be recharged, so sleep well, little bus. The mobility revolution is picking up speed in Germany with the backing of the government. Weil Mobilität wird begeistern, die Mobilität der Zukunft wird hochspannend sein und eine Riesenchance vor allem in der Verbindung strukturpolitisch gedacht zwischen Stadt und Land bedeutet. This trip has also been a huge chance for me to see how autonomous driving could work in my home city of Berlin. To sum it up, there's progress, but there's still a long way to go. It will certainly take time to let people travel in cars without paying attention. We'll keep an eye on it. Stay tuned.